Laxon and Hunter here reacting to Has Been Hotel episode 6 reaction and review. And before we get started, let me remind you all to check out the Patreon to see our reactions early. If you miss seeing the last reactions early, make sure that you do it for next week <laughs> so you can see our finale reactions early. It's a good way to support us, support the channel, all of that sort of stuff. The only other thing I want to talk about is during our live stream discussion for the previous four episodes, we did talk about some theories and I just like to reiterate them, you know, before we get started in case you guys didn't see. So right now it's that Vaggy is an exorcist or was an exorcist, mm -hmm. I suppose, because of the eye patch situation that she has over her eye and then also her spear. She had a very suspicious head tilt in the last episode yes. when Charlie was talking about these are our people and he was saying heaven is judgmental and not as accepting as you think, right? So the fact that there is an angel demon potentially relationship. I mean, I know that Charlie's already half angel, but you guys understand what I mean. The fact that Vaggy and Charlie are in a relationship, maybe that'll come up in the Heaven episode. She didn't seem too enthusiastic to go, but uh, we did have that theory before we saw the episode with Lucifer uh, because of those other things. I think the only thing is we talked about Zestiel being a gossip and spilling the tea about Carmilla. <laughs> I think that was pretty much it. The only other option is we learned last, we had the going idea that somehow Zarephel and Charlie's mom Lilith are connected. Alistair? So uh, we had the theory that Alistair and Lilith were connected because they've been gone for the same amount of time, the last seven years. Yeah, and, and that you last saying... episode, we learned from Husker. Husker that Alistair is also on someone's leash. We yeah. don't know who. And so it seems like Lilith is a good candidate for that, potentially. Especially because it would make sense because why else is he being so nice to Charlie? Yeah. Unless his motivations are unknown. And but I that think... is a sensible motivation. Yeah, and I think that, you know, protect my daughter and help her out with what she's doing, that would make a lot of sense, especially just with his characterization. The overlords do not want people to die, and and so I don't think that they would want people to go to heaven either because the entire reason they're trying to protect the overlord's interest in a couple episodes ago is because they need people to sell to. If the population starts mm -hmm. to diminish in some way, that's going to be a problem. So I wonder if what will happen is that Lilith wants the exterminations to stop, but wants the hotel to fail or else they won't have anyone to rule over if everybody gets redeemed, hmm. right? I could so I that. wonder if it's a middle ground in there. Like, make sure her plan goes well enough to get the exterminations to stop, but then make sure nobody actually gets redeemed and go to heaven, because then we can start an army and actually just kill everyone in heaven. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is Lilith's plan. Mm -hmm. That would make some sense to me. And we also, last episode, we talked about, oh, right, I should probably mention this now. We talked about the idea that the reason why Carmilla was able to kill an angel wasn't because of any particular weapon, but that she did it in a selfless way. She did it out of love to protect mm -hmm. her daughters. So whether or not we'll know that or learn anything about that, I thought that that was a very interesting idea because if you do something out of love, maybe that's what the like what kills the angels, angels? and the exorcists yeah. as opposed to just uh, trying to fight them. And so mm -hmm. even if Lilith, let's say that, you know, for the sake of argument that that is Lilith's plan, that she wants the idea of the hotel to be passed off by heaven, but then for it not to actually be successful so they can do an actual uprising... Lilith's plan will still fail because the premise is that you need to have love in your heart to kill the angels. And so ultimately, Lilith may be operating under a false like premise in general that she's thinking, oh, well, we can kill the angels. We'll just do an uprising. We'll make sure to grow the population. Mm -hmm. We can fight against them. That may not even be a viable plan because they need to do it with love in their hearts. And so Charlie's Hotel will have to work regardless of what her mom wants. Mm -hmm. So there could be some internal sabotage where Alistair wants her to get close, but just not too close. Enough to convince Heaven to stop exterminating people, but not enough to actually redeem anybody. So I think that those are all good ideas because we made them. We're cooking, we're cooking, right? So without further ado, let us get into it. Three, two, one, press and play. And for the sixth time, if you don't understand what a time sink is, please understand, you go on Amazon Prime, you press play when we press play, and then you can listen in whatever language you desire, and you'll have audio at the same time as we do. I'm getting a little frustrated having to explain this to people over and over again, and at least I only have to do it two more times, I suppose. Yes. But it helps us a lot, and people are like, well, why can't you just edit them? Because that takes time. If you would like to edit for four hours, you can feel free to edit our reaction to more visuals. Oh, they have little pride. 
stickers. Oh. Flak jacket. Yeah, I know, right? She's bringing the whole. Aww. Oh. And she has her little guitar. That's cute. Oh, see, she's making Sweetie. excuses. I'm so sus. Does Charlie not know that she used to be an exorcist? Oh, no. Uh, my there beef, we go. My Fucking beef finally. is going to be, if we find out Maggie's backstory this episode, it should have been in her vague ballad yeah. of, like, when I saw your face, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, we'll get mm -hmm. there. That's going to be what I complain about. Oh, my God. I love how she sweeped him. <laughs> oh, it's oh, Cherry Bomb! Oh, there she is, Cherry Bomb! Hey, remember I talked about her a couple episodes yeah. ago? Oh, she looks so pretty. Oh. She's Australian. Is she Australian? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I watched it yesterday, and yet I can't remember if she was Australian. Oh. Oh. Double dead. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, no. Oh my god, she does voluntold! Voluntold! Yeah! Oh my god, okay! How much money does she have? Well, Charlie's a princess, right? I guess I'm so. assuming that. Oh, there's her mom. Oh, in the picture, in you the mean? Portrait, yeah. yeah. Oh! Oh my oh. god! You didn't bring any of your bags! Oh, they're still there! Oh, because they fought. Oh! How many do you have, bestie? Aww. How does a snake trip? It doesn't Over have legs. Over the luggage. It doesn't have legs. He just got, like, caught. Oh. Oh, no! He doesn't know how to have fun? That's all right. Oh. oh, hello. Oh, heaven. Oh, she looks so mad. Oh, no! Oh, Faggy. Oh, I Who don't like him already. This? Any ideas? About? Who he is? I, I want to look at the names they have there. Oh, it's Peter. <laughs> so he's allowed to swear? Okay. I love how echoey it is. Yeah. Oh, it is St. Peter. Oh, okay. Oh! It's the lady yeah. with the, the hair! Seth. Oh! Oh, she's so cute! Oh, they're so baby. I, I don't, I don't know about oh, this. Oh, everyone looks, everyone's furry is in heaven, too. I don't like this guy's voice. I'm sorry. You don't like this song or this no, guy? No, the voice and possibly the song. Everyone is hot. That's hilarious. They are hot. I like fun. her. Yeah. She's good. Oh. Oh. So it's kind of like Happy Day in Hell remix. Oh. So oh, I guess you can. Oh. The angel looks different oh. up here. Was she wearing a mask last I time? I guess, maybe. 
She looks cool. I love it. So I guess that's why he was like, I did a concert last week. Like, they have a... Uh-oh. Mmm, why? Oh, the other people in heaven don't know about that. Oh. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> she looks unwell here. Like, she looks pale. I mean, she is pale. I know, but more than usual. Aw, poor Faggy. Why would you open the door? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's how she lost her eye. Oh my god. Oh my god. They pulled her wings off. Yeah, and her. Oh, but then Charlie found her. Ah. Oh. Oh. Did she not oh. know? Oh my god. Ew. Man, heaven's homophobic. This is bullshit. Oh, they don't know. This does make Vaggie's song worse, though. Uh, uh. But anyway. Yeah, an or angel, she doesn't like, care. And Adam just exposes this, you know what I mean? Yeah, what if Charlie didn't care? That would be or fun Or maybe twist. she just knows already. Oh, uh, no! Not the... I agree. What? Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> no. Oh, I hear a song coming. <laughs> okay. Bruh. Oh. Oh, it's gonna be. But like, this is for they. They are having fun. Nothing's wrong. That is really funny. Ah. Uh, you don't need to work. You gotta take. Oh my god. Oh 
Nefty. Nefty so baby. Oh! Enemies to lovers! He's got a crush! Oh my god! <laughs> I don't think so! Oh no! no. He's been sober. Oh, shit. Oh. I mean, they're already drinking. Oh, good. Yay, heaven. I will say, it's not immoral to use drugs. Yeah, well. Heaven would. Oh, my God. What? Weed, a psychedelic, and whatever PCP is. Like a really bad upper. Oh, this poor guy! I love how he keeps saying I love alcohol. Oh. No! Oh, you no. were doing so well a minute ago! That's not good! Oh my god! Rude. See, that's what I was saying, Hunter, right? In, yeah. my, in my capitalism theory, the fact that, like, they only do bad things because they're in bad circumstances. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Husk! He feels too good to have. Oh! Yeah, cleanliness demon. Oh. Oh. Oh no! How is she crying out of two sides when there's one eyeball? Oh. Oh, she's so baby. She's so baby. Oh, I love that these two dads is taking care of their adult woman friend who is not a child. <laughs> oh my God. Sex room. I love him. I hope I they really get I really warmed up to him as a character. He's here. Oh no! What is happening? Oh my god! At once or consecutively? Oh my god! 
Oh, nifty. Oh, no. What? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, oh I don't like where this is going. That bit of animation there where her laughing, uh, mwah. Oh! <laughs> Bowls of condoms outside the sex room. Oh! Oh, really? Uh. What don't we know? Oh my god! That's mean. Oh my god! Oh my god! So that is a helmet they yeah. wear. I... Does that mean Adam is wearing a... I don't know. I don't know. Oh, now they know! Gonna, Emily's gonna rebel against. Oh! Oh, that's a shot we saw! Oh no! Oh, oh this shit. song fucking rocks! Yeah!
Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my that god. That was a lot. Oh my god. Holy shit. Jesus. No! And it's so bad! Oh my god. Oh. I love how there's the cool S there. Oh my that god, that was a really in. good episode. I Holy oh boy. shit. I will say, <sighs> um, there, there was again, even though that song was really good, yeah, was one two, there yeah. was, there, there were some like weird rhyming things where rhymes are at the end of sentences but then they did it in the middle instead of the end that happened a couple times and i was like oh why did they do that instead of just making it rhyme properly like structurally some of them were sus but they were still like very hype moments this episode i don't know if i like the song that the other guy sung at the beginning of the episode i though. thought that was i did cute. not like his voice i thought it was cute <laughs> not I mean, it was fine, but I didn't like his voice very much. I love Emily, though. Like, yeah, I think that's a very interesting yes. character to contrast Charlie and that she's also seems to be a princess. Yeah, but right? that's like, like, at, like you know, asking those questions, Emily, is what got Lucifer sent to hell, too. Yeah. So you wonder, like, if something similar might happen I to Emily. I think that Emily may broadcast the truth because it says, like, oh, your job is to keep everyone joyful and happy. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that maybe she has a position of influence similar mm -hmm. to Charlie, and so maybe... I feel like that she'll expose the situation to everybody else in heaven. <laughs> also, one of the characters in the heaven sequence looked a lot like angel dust. And so I wonder, like, could it be a possibility that the residents of heaven are told, if your family members aren't here, like, don't worry, like, they'll eventually get to the path of salvation. And that could also cause heaven to rebel as well. And that's why heaven would have a stake in this because, you know, family members have been separated over, right? Because if eight, that is something somebody related to Angel Dust, like his sister or, I don't know, cousin. Like, they look the same. She had legs, whereas he has arms, mm -hmm. and they had the same color scheme. So mm -hmm. I think that that would be an interesting I, idea. I'm so happy that we kind of, like, uh, I think a lot of people did, but we were right about uh, Vaggie being the... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I uh. do. I think, though, like I said in the, in the video, that it really pisses me off, though, that... I know that they wanted to hide this, and mm -hmm. that's why they made Vaggie's song in the earlier episode so vague. Mm -hmm. However, that is not an excuse in terms of, because if she is by herself singing to herself, she has no reason to be vague like that. Mm -hmm. And so it it reads as that they intentionally, the you lyricist did mention, that to hide it. Yeah, you could even right? mention some secret. Yeah, know? but it doesn't make sense in character for her to sing so vague vaguely mm -hmm. and so i think that like now even uh, you know because i've slowly been analyzing all the songs for my other channel and i haven't really i haven't got into that one yet and i was hoping that maybe along Although, like the line, imagine imagine it, if but... like husker was like yeah your girlfriend was like screaming holler and singing outside about how she used to murder people well yeah i mean like... but that doesn't happen like you know, <laughs> you what, know I mean? what i mean like the song musical theater song you can choose to have none of the other characters here like a soliloquy like you know sure. what I mean like a monologue and so I just think that that was a really lazy way to hide the secret the fact that they had her those lyrics don't even make sense anymore Hey everybody, it's Editing Cal here. I wanted to jump on and quickly explain this just because I wanted to add this as a footnote in the video, but I think that it's more important to articulate it aloud. So the line is, when I saw your face, you made me feel like a stranger in a brand new place. And this still doesn't make any sense with the reveal that she is an exorcist. If she's saying that Charlie made her feel like a stranger in a brand new place, despite the fact that hell is familiar to her because she comes down here 
here and terrorizes people, it should be that she is a stranger or felt like a stranger in a familiar place. Because then we understand that she is in a place that is familiar to her, yet she sees it as brand new, as a stranger to hell, opens up her eyes, treats her as a nobody instead of a soldier. By saying stranger in a brand new place, you're not actually saying anything because you will always be a stranger. <laughs> if you are in a brand new place, you are factually a stranger. Charlie did not make you feel that way. If the idea is that the place is not new, you need some sort of comparison or despite. So despite that the place is familiar, it made her feel like she was in a brand new place, right? Because then we understand that she is in a place that is familiar yet sees it as brand new. If the idea is that Charlie made her feel welcome or a part of hell immediately, it should be that she made her feel like she had always been a part of a brand new place. You can feel like a stranger in a familiar place, as in you're seeing it with new eyes for the very first time, you're seeing it anew for the first time or you can feel welcome or like you were always part of a place you've never been before in terms of a metaphor if you're saying that charlie made you feel like a stranger in a brand new place that doesn't mean anything because you're always a stranger in every brand new place that you are in it doesn't make any sense they clearly made it vague because they didn't want to reveal the secret. That is not very good in terms of lyric writing. Mm -hmm. They should have been a bit more clever in terms of having Vaggy know what she's talking about and what Vaggy's alluding to. Like, but then yeah. we still don't have the context because right now it's like somebody told them be vague on purpose because this isn't information that comes up until episode six, which like, doesn't make sense. Because like, also when you when you reveal like. When you reveal both the what the nature, the betrayal of of Vaggy and also Charlie learning it in the same episode, it yeah. feels like it happens all at once. Whereas if you hint to you it, you could earlier, have had it be in that episode, and then that would have made the song a lot stronger. So and yeah, that's mm -hmm. just a frustrating. That's a very frustrating element of this specific episode to me. Is that after a while it was so clear that she was an exorcist, but look at any other musical theater song, you do not have vague lyrics like that, especially for backstory purposes. When characters are talking about how they met another character or just like, I, I don't know, just backstory stuff, like it gets really specific. So the fact that that was so vague, that really just bothered me, the fact that they did it that way. And it bothers me even more now because now we actually know what she's talking about. And when you line up the lyrics to the things that she said, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't mesh that well anymore. Like, it kind of got worse almost in hindsight. But I do like Emily. I do like how this felt like, the end song felt like an act one climax situation where you had references to other songs because there was like happy day in hell in there and then there was adam song like mm -hmm. the hell is forever stuff in there and so that could also account for maybe why rhythmically stuff was happening because it was almost like you know one day more in lame is how it's like there's different parts of people's previous songs piling mm -hmm. in on each other maybe that's what they were going for i still need to check it because i think some of it was sus but i do like all of the plot beats that happened in this episode. I like the fact that we did get Vaggie's backstory. I like that Charlie seems to fit in a lot in heaven, which probably worries Vaggie as well. I like that we had the courtroom scene. I think that using the angel dust portal, that was a good way to connect those things together. I think it's weird how Alistair's not around in this episode though. Like you think that he would get invited to go drinking with everyone too. And so I think it's, yeah. it's it, that may not be a mistake. I'm not saying that in terms of an inconsistency, it's interesting that he's not around. You start to wonder why, like why isn't Alistair around? Like Charlie's going to heaven, where's Alistair? What's he doing? Is it just because Alistair fucking up Valentine Valentino would be too powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be too powerful for Valentino and Alistair to be in the same room together. But yeah, I'm not saying that as a plot hole. I genuinely am like, hmm, where did Alistair go this episode? That's a little convenient that he's not around the one time that Charlie, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because especially after last episode, it's like, well, you know, where did he go? Is he reporting to someone on what's happening? Very interesting with that. But 
I yeah. I think that this was one of the best episodes. I agree. I would agree. Yeah. I think that that's true. It, and just, it makes episodes other episodes are, worse, but that doesn't yeah. mean that this one's bad, right? Like you know, the, you but know. But yeah, what I'm so saying? like the drama, and I'm really worried. You know, I was thinking about this. I didn't express it out loud, but I was thinking about this with the last episode. I'm like, oh, it's kind of interesting because typically, you know, gay characters don't just. Uh, aren't always allowed just to have a girlfriend and that not be the, the kind of main drama. Right. Typically, it's like, oh, it's them trying to find the... Getting the girl is the... Right. Right? Um, so I was kind of curious, like, oh, that's kind of sweet that they can just have that and not fuck with it. Well, I think that, though, Hunter... But I think that they... But, okay, but I still enjoy this. It's a cliffhanger, this. but I don't think that it's going to be that big of a yeah, deal, Yeah, so which... Because uh, that's what I was thinking last episode... This one, I do like that they have that because yeah. also the whole notion of like someone can be redeemed is Charlie's thing. So I think yeah. that would be a really beautiful thing for their relationship. It's like, oh, yeah, you lied and you did this bad thing. Right. But we can grow from like it. Vaggie is proof. almost. Yeah. But then also on top of that, though, it's not that. OK, like clearly she lied, but also she makes references to the fact that she's military in the other episodes. So what exactly did Charlie think was like going maybe on, she was in the military right? when she was a human? Maybe, maybe. But I, I, I suspect or maybe I think like it seemed like Charlie was shocked. But I wonder if they're actually going to pull out the rug from under us that she actually did know the whole time that Vaggie was. Yeah, an angel. I saw the she... giant scars on your back where the yeah, wings like, were maybe torn off. Babe. It's going to be that Charlie Which knew. She's what just, a scene. She's sad that Vaggie right? yeah. didn't get the chance to tell her herself. So I think that, like, and maybe this is too 4D chess or whatever, but do you understand what I'm saying, Hunter? What if the reason why she's shocked isn't because she didn't know, but because she knew and as part of her, like, mm -hmm. just a part of her personality, she thought that Vaggie should be entitled to have mm -hmm. that secret mm -hmm. and be able to tell people on her own time and Adam took that away from her. So what if that's the twister Rooney? It's like, I knew that you were an angel the entire time. The reason why I reacted that way is because I felt bad that Adam exposed you before you were ready because that was something that I wanted you to do when you felt comfortable telling me. Mm -hmm. Because I think that it would be odd, kind of a little bit odd if maybe Charlie didn't know this entire time. But I think I think that I'm cooking with that because every other time that they've done one of those tropes, like for example, Pentis with the eggs. The yes. eggs tell him the lady killed the demon and mm -hmm. Pentis doesn't believe him. You think that that's gonna be because the trope is, oh no, I said something I wasn't supposed to say and now you know about it and that's yeah. the cliffhanger, but they subverted that. So even though they're leaving us on a very intense cliffhanger, what if they do that again where Charlie did know the entire time, she's just personally offended. Adam took the moment away from her, you know? It's like mm -hmm. when somebody has a secret and you hope that one day they'll feel comfortable enough to tell you and then somebody else tells you, well, you just ruined that moment. Like, you, you ruined it. It's the their system. own secret yeah. to tell. It's not yours. And so I think that maybe we'll see Charlie be more upset about that mm -hmm. because every other time they've done a predictable conflict, it hasn't gone that way. Like, we thought, mm -hmm. oh, well, I hope that but Angel Dust doesn't get kicked major. out of the hotel because yeah. they believe Penn is over angel dust they could have done that and they didn't right mm -hmm. but i'm saying that in terms of a writing perspective they've never done the predictable thing the predictable thing also... is for charlie and baggy to be mad at each other mm -hmm. which is not they didn't do that with angel dust and pentis and then they didn't do that with the eggs and they also didn't do that in a couple other spots that i can't exactly think of at the moment um, i will say that like that final song how it builds yeah on like one reveal after the other after the other after it was the very other. good the scene where emily and charlie are singing together that was brilliant very forceful very uh, gorgeous yeah i do think um, emily's gonna fuck some shit like i think that in terms of her her role in all this i think that she's gonna tell heaven the truth and especially people mm -hmm. still have loved ones down there i could see emily i could see emily being a kind of like a fallen angel at the end of this i don't know if she will fall though i think that that's they'll probably have, like, why a liaison. Yeah, maybe, you know what i mean say. because i mean you're right hunter but also maybe they're gonna even investigate the idea that lucifer falling wasn't fair mm -hmm. right and so i think that it's gonna be i know this is kind of a weird comparison but just like you know how in the little mermaid right like trident hates the humans and whatever but then at the end it's like oh we've bridged land and sea sure. human and mermaid what if, solidarity what if together. they make the argument that lucifer shouldn't have been kicked out so they invite lucifer lilith and charlie back up but then charlie says no yeah i think that, that that's what they're gonna do kind yeah. of like and again random that could be reference a finale. but you know how like Anna and Elsa, like, 
like at the end of Frozen 2, Elsa's living in the woods and then Anna's queen of Arendelle. I think that sure. they're kind of going to do something like that where Charlie stays down, but Emily is her <laughs> correspondent. Liaison. Like yeah. they are the princess, like they are the respective princesses and they have an alliance and all I that sort of I couldn't remember a thing that happened in Frozen, in Frozen 2. 2. I <laughs> saw that in the theaters <laughs> with you. But yeah, I, I think that I'm cooking because I think that the extermination conflict, and this is what we said on our stream, I think that the extermination con conflict will be over, but that doesn't mean that the hotel, like, you know what I mean? That's a season one conflict mm -hmm. resolution is the exterminations are over, but then you have the idea of the hotel and whether or not sinners can be redeemed. And mm. I feel like what would be great and like save this, okay, because this may happen because I can see it in my head. So, and post credit scene or like the very end of the episode, Alistair is like, we finally did it, Lilith. We stopped the exterminations. And Lilith is like, perfect. We proceed to phase two. two. And then da, the da, first da, time that we yeah. see her, and then mm. it's like, oh, well, they mm, just wanted mm, Charlie mm. to stop the extermination so they could rise up against heaven even though now for the first time in a while there's peace and her mom is gonna fuck it up and then her mom will become the antagonist i think that's pretty spicy so save it because <laughs> i i have kalaxin gift of prophecy i can see something <laughs> like that happening but i think though now we are getting like we're diving you know hussy deep the the, the heaven hussy we are diving deep into the plot like, uh, are, i imagine if you get into Monster heaven you're basically week. a ken doll you, uh, know? you know what i mean but we're not doing Monster of the Week next episode like okay. episode seven and eight like we're going like the plot is plotting we are continuing on where the there's not going to be plotting. some weird deviation where it's like and velvet's fashion show was ruined so now <laughs> angel dust needs to be her model for the week and pentis is there trying on snake clothes like none of that is but, happening uh -oh, we're getting Oscar into and the Nishi shit. needs to learn the magic of friendship yeah like we're not doing by that, building you know? a model I mean, train like together. we're doing the plot is ended like this is going to be the fun mm -hmm. now we're going for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed our reaction. I hope you guys had fun. I definitely did. Thank you for attending Kalaxon's Royal Court, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!